A as, union. As a union. Like basically you're like a, a union. union. Absolutely. Right. And we put it together and we start screaming, hey, where's our hat? Where's our portion? Huh? That's the problem. You see, they get the attention. The state, the state, that's what they go by. They'll allot X amount of money for every, every situation. situation. Budget, absolutely. Right. So the pythons, everybody wants to scream over the pythons because they're, they're doing what? They're killing all of the native animals. They're eating the raccoons. They're eating the possums. They're eating the does. The does. They're eating all that. So everybody's screaming, oh my God, I don't want that to happen. But nobody's going to scream over a little iguana. I, you know, I know a big portion of Hollywood that's definitely screaming. Well, right, already. because they're coming, <laughs> they're coming up out of their toilet bowls. Hundred percent. They're yeah. ready. They're the first ones to sign the petition. I promise you. Right, and I think, I think that you know, I think that with your concept in the game, I think that you know, um, I'm willing to lobby with you. I'm, I love it. You know, you know, what I'm saying I, I, I want to. Um, I also, you know, I've been talking to the iguana man here, and um, you know, we, we want to put something together. As far as uh, um, individual groups like the Iguana people. Oh, I love it. You I understand? heard something about that. Yeah. That so, sounds amazing. Yeah, and I think and I think that if if we can have people who've been in the game, such as you, such as him. Listen, I'm new at this, and this man has taught me everything that that um, he can every I day. I was right there with him. Yeah. So I, I rode for him for two months. Right. <laughs> very blessed and very thankful. Yeah, man. Yeah, and it, like I said, I gave up. <laughs> I was sitting in my home, not doing nothing because I was like one of the biggest aquacultural people in the circuit at one point in time. You know, so I used to raise goldfish, koi, and everything, and I used to have like WalMarts and and all of that stuff. But then things changed in in the office, and rules changed. And things went south. You know, you know, the last time we had, you know, uh, the economy go down. Yeah. So, well, I'm right there with you. I was at Hilton for the last 10 years in office. Right. COVID hit. <laughs> so yeah. Well. Make something out of nothing. I think I think that you know between all of us mm -hmm. and and many more yeah. iguana people that are out there. Yep. I think that you know we should band together and put something together. This way we can go. To Tallahassee and talk to the right people. I agree. There's enough iguanas out here. There's enough land. We can't cover it all. No, no. No way. No, I mean, there's guys, like I said, you mentioned the name earlier. Uh, 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 A and B removal. A and B removal. The poor guy is up there in uh, Okeechobee. Okeechobee, and they like there's like thousands of them, but yet he can't he can't seem to to get anybody yeah. to help. They're not aware of what they're causing the damage of this, right. you know, especially when they get to their crops, that's when they're going to start noticing. Right. Right. And and that's the thing. You know, I, I you know, I'm starting to see it. as new as I am in this in this gig, I put my balls to the wall on this. I mean, he can tell you. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I work 16, 17 hours sometimes for free. Just I, I preach it on his channel. They don't see the 16, 17 hours. Yeah, they, don't. they don't see you sweating. They I no. change shirts no, sweat, three four times a day. Yeah, and the right. and the no one sees that. We just show. Stuff. They see the good stuff on TV, the cowboy stuff, but that's entertainment. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know? yeah. Some of that stuff is even. Sta I believe some of that stuff is staged. You know. What I'm oh, saying? it's other things. I guarantee you, on other places, attitude, but not on our shows. I promise. No, you that. no, no. <laughs> I, I witnessed it. I was created from it. I was born from it. And, you know, all within there. I want you to go to his first video. If you don't believe me, do I have um, the iguana. Which one was it? At Home Depot. Yeah. I was so scared to even touch it. <laughs> I still remember that day, and I manned up and grabbed it. But I learned everything. Like in two months, it was so much knowledge that I just absorbed. And once you learn it, and you have the passion for it, like you did, oh yeah, you got all the information you needed. Now you ran with it and get right. your own experience and learning exactly. your ways. You know, Raj has his way, his technique. Yeah. You you yeah. manifest into your ways and your own ways. Everyone looks at things differently, oh, I, different perspectives. That's right. I don't do nothing. I don't realistically do nothing until I'm basically called. I don't <laughs> care if it's if it's bidding a job. You understand? Know I'll call him first. You remember that movie, uh, King of New York? Yeah. If there's an iguana sold in the park, I want in on it. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. <laughs> you, you humps got fed over here while the rest of us. No, 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 but 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 I love it. to y'all's point great. though, you guys are right. There's a lot of. Um, a lot of attention, a lot of resources being devoted to the Python program, which is great, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because these snakes are taking over. But 
what people fail to realize is right in our own backyards, right in our bathrooms, right in our pools, right on top of our roofs, right in our communities, our, our restaurants, our, our cities, our crops, these iguanas, their numbers have, have exponentially exploded in the last couple of years. And, it, and here's the, the scary part. What you're seeing now is going to double every 100%. single year until something's gonna happen. So why, why, like you said, why are we gonna wait until something serious happens, potentially a tragedy to happen, to bring this up to an attention when we, when we can start dealing with it right now? Right. You know, and that's why we need the help from everybody to, uh, you know, to get this to the, you know, the, the, the right people's eyes and to pass, you know, something, some kind of program mm -hmm. so we can start really taking charge and doing what we do. We have, we have all the manpower, we have all the techniques, we have all the tools. We just need the program, and then it, it's it's all access good, man. Well. And the access, that's and it. Information. Exactly. Like day, yeah. We need the resources. We, you know, some pamphlets would be nice. Some this would be nice. Some that would be nice. Going to spots where you know these iguanas are having a field day, we can go out there, take them out, and you know the, the programs, whatever, you know, incentives are in the programs. We're not too, we're 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 not super worried about that. But we just want a program where we can do this. You know, and what let I'm saying? everyone know how the importance of getting rid of them. But right now, I go to a neighborhood. Yeah. I got 20 iguanas, but my neighbors over here yeah. love them. Oh, matter of fact, they name them and right. they're feeding them. Right. So we're getting rid of here. I can't do nothing. I can't guarantee that I can come back if your neighbor's feeding them. Exactly. So we're doing this, or you know, exactly. isn't that? If, so if you're feeding it and naming it, technically that's your pet, right? Yep. That's what I'm going so through. So is FWC going to enforce that when people are naming and feeding? They did, The FWC just did a new article too about how the population has, how it's grown in the last couple of years and how the, the territory has grown. You have iguanas right now that are in uh, Port St. Lucie, yeah. in Melbourne, in uh, Brevard they're County. Sighting, you have, that's un, that's unheard of. I have sightings in Pinellas County. In Pinellas County. Sightings right now in Pinellas County. Everyone's talking about it. Uh, Even yeah. though they're big in Tegus up there, they are starting to get iguanas. And then everyone right now is, their thing is that common knowledge is, we're just waiting for a cold front, we'll be fine. Well, unfortunately, these iguanas adapted. That cold... They're not staying out in the trees anymore. Yeah. They're going to go back to their burrows mm -hmm. and they're bundling up with body heat. 20, 30 of them together. Yep, underground. 10 they feet, 20 feet underground. They adapt it now. They're not going to be left out in the cold. Last time, like, yeah, we'll, we'll go and they're falling out the trees. This last cold, I didn't see that many fall out the trees. There were some on the floor, couldn't really move, but I didn't really see nothing. And I was out there. Yeah. You know, I saw you out there on um, one of your videos. You had the thermometer testing yep. them out, but you, I didn't see anything fall out. Yeah, well, those iguanas, I manually shook out the tree. They didn't see, really fall. And, it, and, and, and like you said, it's just the brave ones that went up there. But the smart ones, the 80% of the smart ones are underground. The uh, big readers and all Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snuggling and just staying nice and warm, you know? So, um, yeah, I would like, yeah, I would like to see some kind of program, dude. Some kind of program. They're so, like, they have the Python Bowl. They have the Guardian of the Blades program. They have different, you know what I'm saying, uh, different stuff, you know what I'm saying, um, for these Python hunters. But what about for the Iguana hunters that are out here fighting this war right in our in our own backyards? What about us? Literally coming out of the toilets. What, what about us? I, I was at a I was at a I was at a job location and I had and I and I believe I brought him with me on a job location before I can't mention where it was but um, because it was it was, a, it was a state facility so but uh, the thing is is that the people on the outside they were coming in at six o'clock every night when the when the facility would close down for the night with boxes of lettuce and they're sitting there and they're throwing them out throwing it out to the to, to the thing I had I'm catching all of all of all of the iguanas okay we're banging like two or three hundred a day there okay and and we put them in 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 the in the holding thing because the facility doesn't like us to kill on premise so we have we have yeah because you know, nobody wants to see it nobody doesn't want to see it so we, we we go to another disclosed area not far about not far along um, and it's just it seems like these people don't care and when you when you go to take them they'll go if you go over here and kill i mean get get the thing they'll they'll release them out of a cage now i drive around in my van and i have a huge cage and i put it there until i gather up all of the stuff but then you have the the, the tree hugger come and say oh we're letting them out and they start letting them go yeah he had he's actually had like uh several people actually like manually release iguanas out of yeah, the traps right Picture yeah thing. which is unfortunately it is because it's breaking the law it's a misdemeanor felony yeah punishable by fines if you are a licensed trapper yeah they cannot involve this is how strict the rule is even the cops are in the way you have to make the 
You're not, if you, if you have to do that and you call the cops, you literally have to enforce the cop to do his job. Because he's like, what do you want me to do? I want you to enforce tampering with a trapper. For instance, right now we're here and I'm catching a raccoon. This neighbor loves raccoons. Right. He's no, he's not allowed to stand by his gate and yell. That's interfering. Right. Yelling anything, throwing extra food out so he doesn't come over here. That's interfering. Right. And all you have to do is report it. But a lot of people don't understand that. Right. And so I, and they, I, they have the, like I said, the awareness of what they're causing. Everyone still thinks the iguanas belong here, that they were born here. No, I know. They, yeah, that, that's that's sad that they still think they belong here. They don't understand. They have no concept of invasive species. They, they don't understand what that yeah. means right now in Florida. Right. A lot of people don't even really know uh, what invasive even means, really. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta. I just think like you know more education for the general public to let people know like, hey, you know these lizards aren't from here. This is the damage that they do, and if you don't do anything, they will reproduce and cause an infestation where you're seeing them at. That's just facts right there. Yeah. We've seen it. We've seen iguanas uh, infestate places that they were never there. Not a single one. Now you go there. There's 40, 50 of them right. sitting there. Right. Just like uh, my clients, like. I, like I've been here since I was three years old. My clients like I've been here my whole life. How come now I'm just noticing it? Like like you were pointing out earlier, the numbers double every year. So okay, five thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand, forty thousand. Yeah. We're clearly in the ten millions. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If Puerto Rico and that little spot, they're in ten million. We're gonna be easily at twenty million next year. Oh yeah. At the end, as soon as the next breeding season, which we have ideas to start a program at least for the two breeding seasons that iguanas go through the, the year. breeding season there's the, two it, seasons out the year is a critical time to get them because you know you're there's going to be a lot of them out trying to mingle and trying to breed but then also you know uh after you know after if they do successfully breed a lot of those females they're they're carrying 20 to 60 eggs 50 to 70 yeah okay up to 70 eggs those are our big you know uh targets that we should really be focusing on because you catch one potentially you're taking 70 out of the ecosystem you know exactly. just in that one capture so i think really like a like a big focus would be in that in that season as well you know yeah, for sure concentrate on the big breeders the big males and the females yeah the females they can lay eggs but there's no male breeder they're just dud eggs they don't right. get fertilized exactly exactly we gotta we gotta we gotta focus uh we pretty much done the knowledge on. for everyone already we just need the access the knowledge again and pretty much the permission we already done all the research on the front mm -hmm. line we know every there's nothing i don't think there's a question they can ask us that we can't answer we can tell you how people are going to react how some people that do understand i go you we've had video of people yelling us every single day you know well, and, we whether, still, whether, and we're still like calm about it and we try to educate them about well, it. well whether people react to it good or bad it's something that just at this point it just needs to be done you have to people have to understand how invasive you know these animals actually are and and, and the, the you know what animal can lay 70 eggs like that and there's so many of them it's it's unreal yeah. you know what i'm saying there's what 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 ridiculous. normal animal can do that so these animals uh their biology is to is to breed and to make a lot of offspring and to keep reproducing to keep their population strong their strength is in numbers yeah if you have one or two iguanas they'll eat some stuff they'll dig a couple holes they'll poop everywhere but now when you have you know several of them or maybe several hundreds of them in the area it things can go really south really quick under 24 hours it, yeah where we just were yeah they spent thousands and thousands, almost a hundred thousand dollars on just their garden to pull every little patches. Yeah. One day, the next day, everything was gone. In one day. Wow. And they're like, uh, you can see, you know, you know how expensive landscaping is to get all that stuff done. Yeah. That's what I, how I much work like, and stuff too. She signed the year contract the next day. Yeah. She was a monthly person. Yeah. And then she just realized how bad it still was. She's like, you know what? I can't have this. I can't plant something. Spend over a hundred thousand dollars. And the next day is gone. It's gone. I don't have money to replace that. Right. I totally understand. But people are not understanding. Man. There's a mango farmer up in in West Palm. You know, I don't have permission to mention his name, but but um, he actually he actually has a section that he just devotes to them so that they eat that. Hopefully, he fences oh, off everything okay. else okay. off, okay. so, so stay and he leaves them over there little treat you know, you know what i'm saying okay like please don't eat the rest yeah, of these yeah. things just take this and be good and please yeah. have mercy on my on the rest of my crops but but you know you can tell you can tell on the prices uh, on the mangoes i mean they, they they're, going they're, they're going up and going up like crazy you know and it's and it's kind of sad i think that like i said if we have more people and if we can sit down as a whole here and figure out something that we can draft that we can take it to tallahassee Okay, so sorry to cut you off. We're going to do that, 
but I just remembered something. There's going to be an FWC meeting uh, this Monday. Okay. In West Palm Beach. Okay, so then uh, then we should attend that. We should definitely, we should definitely, we should definitely try to attend that. Uh, but we definitely need to go to Tallahassee. Definitely to talk to them. I'll I'll give you guys the the info about that. I've seen it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's about iguanas. Okay. Yeah. Well, then then you know then I'm gonna put off. I was going I was going up uh, up north um, this this week. But I think I, I think if you say that you you know if you can find out. Yeah. I'll put that off and and we'll definitely attend that. Or see if you can zoom. Sometimes they let you zoom. No, I'd rather go. Because I like my voice to be heard. I love it. You know, eventually, yeah. eventually, you, you're gonna find out as you come to know me. We can hear you. We can <laughs> you mute know. you and something like, no, I'm not finished. It's my yeah. time. You got yeah. my attention. You really got my attention. Yeah, that's why I said. Like that's it. why. That's why I'm trying to put this together. I like it. You understand? I'm trying to put this together. And if any of you people are out there, like I said, I heard from that that A and B guy up there. You know, we need people like you. We need people that are willing to yep. jump into the game, you okay. know, where we can where we can all share the work. You uh, understand? Absolutely. Some of these guys are out there starving. I had him tell me the other day, you know, um, you know, I got to drive two and a half hours to go to work. You understand? Yeah. Do you got anything? And I, yeah, yeah. I I like to to run around and I like to knock on the door and show people what's going on. Absolutely. But if we have one unit. You understand? One big voice. One big voice. We're unstoppable. Hey, that is true. That we're is unstoppable. True. Can't be ignored either. No, no, not at all. And it's like this video. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tag some of the state officials with this video. So oh. get ready, get ready, Mr. Scott. I'm coming to see you. <laughs> yep. Real definitely. quick, I'm gonna give you guys a little update of the, because FWC is completely aware of what's going on. Yep. I'm just like, you know, and I'm not trying to bash anybody or say anything, but I'm just very, I'm just very surprised that you know they. Till this day, they still haven't, you know, hey, let's put a little program together. At least, you know, let's get some people involved and let's do this. Let's do it. I'm just surprised because the thing with the pythons is they like it's like they really jumped to that. But they're completely aware of this problem. Real quick, I'm just going to read you uh, new literature that they just put out over here. We have green iguana. Let's see. Um, OK, key facts. First introduced in the wild via pet trade as of 1964, now established across uh, urban suburb, uh, suburban areas of Southern Florida, more than 5,500 iguanas have been removed from FWC and partners since October, 2020 high reproductive rate, females laying 14 to 76 eggs annually. Excellent diggers can burrow holes in soft substrate and, uh, next to water control structure. So they're aware that the females lay these eggs. They're aware that they can dig holes, especially by water control areas that, which are, very essential to you know how uh, Florida is, especially during the rainy season, but also very expensive you know to maintain and to build. So, uh, green iguanas cause significant economic impacts by damaging infrastructure by digging burrows that erode and collapse sidewalks, foundations, seawalls, beams, roadways, canal banks. Green iguanas and other burrowing non-native reptiles cause millions, millions of dollars of damage annually to water control structures and roadways in Florida. This can create threats to human health, safety, important infrastructure, damage, or being degraded. So they are completely aware of it. Let's see, the impact in Florida. Green iguanas uh, adversely impact native wildlife by competing with and preying on native plants and wildlife, including vulnerable species. Burrowing owls, oh, no. gulf or tortoise, same habitat. They're aware of that. Green iguanas are herbivores that consume foliage and flowers but adult green iguanas can also feed opportunistically on protected bird eggs and small animals and even dead animals. Right. That's what it's saying. Green iguanas have been documented consuming native tree snails, plants, larva of in uh, the, they're eating the larva too of the right. Miami blue butterfly. Like you were saying, if they see it, they're opportunistic. Why are, you know, they're, they're looking for food if they're just roaming around, you know? Exactly. Managing focus, provide, okay, so look, they said a management focus. Providing tactical assurance to impact homeowners, early detection, rapid response of reports to establish rains, uh, renewing or removing iguanas from sensitive ecological areas. We're going to read the last section real quick. Control and management. Minimizing uh, adverse impacts of green iguanas continues to be a priority at FWC and partner agencies. The FWC have managed green iguanas in Florida through providing technical assistance to impact homeowners. 
uh, controlling iguanas where they have damaged infrastructure and uh, ecological areas, such as the Florida Keys, supporting in an, uh, in an innovative research aim at uh, iguana detection and removal, and removing uh, and removing regulatory barriers barriers from public areas to humanely kill non-native non-invasive reptiles on public lands. So, what what does that say right there? It says that they're kind of trying to teach people how to do this, how to teach people how to do that. And I don't know if they're doing that personally or word of mouth, but, um, you know, I haven't seen anything about it like that. I haven't seen you know? anything, though. We're, we're the ones educating right now. Yeah. For instance, like you just said they're aware of it. So here's like, again, we can go say for some magical reason, we get all the iguanas out of the neighborhoods. Yeah. Where are they right now? Where are they going to go? Where are they going to be the most and repopulate again? all our county and state parks. There's nothing being done there. You, you're trying to protect something. Where the burrowing owl is protected here. Yeah. But yet there's 20 guanas around it every day. Then they're not doing nothing. They're if fit. they are protected, so why aren't we taking action to protect them from iguanas? Right. I've seen all the day. And, and I went to two nest sites yesterday. There's a field that usually had a bunch of burrowing owls like five years ago. I seen two nest sites. Guess what? I went over there yesterday, uh, like two days ago. There was no barrier around it. And guess what? The, the nest was destroyed and the, the it, everything was in ruins. So like again, there's the problem. We're going to say, look at it, put a sign on it, but do nothing to protect it. Right. Just bringing awareness is not going to It's not enough. So you have to have a plan. You have to enforce it. You have to. We're going to lose everything. So we go back to the parks. Okay? Say for now we educate the parks. Yeah. Where's the next place we've got to go? So let's go for Davy, Orange Drive. Everyone likes to go out there for the iguanas, right? Yeah. Follow it all the way down to 441. What, what do you get to? A water dam. All the monsters are there. And you can't go there because it's protected. Don't bring a boat here. Can't have access here. Yeah. So here we go again. We've solved the problem, but there goes the big breeders. Yeah. It's it's a it's an endless battle if we can't get to their main nest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, how, get somebody. You guys know this is a problem. You don't want every Tom, Dick, and Harry to go but, in there. Give someone the access. Get what's them. crazy is, I mean, they make a state. They, they, you know, they just put this thing out. And like I said, I'm not trying to bash anybody or anything like that. But it says that they're providing technical assistance uh, to impacted homeowners uh, by empowering them to control iguanas on property. And they're contracting removal where iguanas have damaged infrastructure and in ecological sensitive areas. Here's the thing. We're out and about every single day. I have not yet, like I said, seen, I haven't seen any of this. You want to, we can do right now. You can call 311 right now, which is like 411 back in the day where you get information. 311 is for all your code enforcement. So you're looking to find something, you press 311, I need the city for this. Tell them right now, you have an iguana in your house. Is anybody going to come help me? They're going to be like, sorry, there's nothing we can do. You got to hire a trapper. All those, all the people, the iguanas in their toilet? Yep. They, oh, yeah, you have, they're telling homeowners, you got to take it out. Yeah. And then they don't tell them the whole truth now. Remember, the moment you trap an iguana, willingly or not willingly, it's in your house. You have it in your hand. Yep. It's you, your responsibility. You're responsible to, to you humanely put it down. Every read it. You can go to the next door app. Anything. Oh, I got iguana. I just put it outside my house. You just broke. You, you just admitted to a crime. Right. You just admitted to a crime, but yet mm. nothing's still being done. And if you touch one of them spiny ones, you better be believe you're gonna get hurt. Oh, I already know. Yeah, <laughs> that's very, very dangerous. Did very you dangerous. see one of my videos where, where there, yeah. we had it in a cage and it was? Oh like, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, it was yeah, insane, yeah, and that, that was yeah. and that was in that was in a burrowing owl uh, no, nest. See? And and wow. I had the assistance from one of the FWC. I can't mention his name, but he's very, very on top of this game. You know, once I get permission to mention his name. He'll, he'll definitely jump on this because he cannot stand the fact he's you know that what they're doing of course you understand but uh you know quite a few of my job sites have burrowing owls in them and and i have witnessed the 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 spiny coming out with baby birds in their mouths Look at that. and the facilities that that i'm at they don't want the attention so what's happening why can't why don't they want the attention? Why does not, how come the, the, the state does not protect them? You know? Facts. You know, they, ha they, have, they have all of this stuff. I mean, it's not only that, it's just, it's everything. It's the invasive geese, it's this, it's that. Right now, with all the, the crazy COVID germs that are going on and all of this, this only adds on top of it. You understand? And, and to me, 
you can't even enjoy a city park anymore. No. There's no. salamander everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, uh, yeah. And I don't So how come there... I don't, so that's... Uh, what is it? Controlled... What is it called? That's, oh. that, that's spreading diseases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, there's yeah. a code enforcer. How come they... I don't know how they haven't shut the parks down. It's like they're waiting for someone. Yeah, it's, un, it's it's unsanitary. You know, you're tracking in there. You're bringing your car. Your kids are playing in it. They step in uh, it. And, and, and like I said, like I said... Mm. You know, the, the FWC is aware of what's going on. The parks are aware of what's going on. Why isn't anybody taking action? What are they waiting for? Are they waiting for somebody to get sick? Or do they just not think it's a big deal? No, nobody's, nobody's, nobody is doing what oh, we want to do right now. I think that, like I said, we need to get people like us yep. and people that are out there yep. that, that, you know, that, are, that want to become part of this movement. They need to contact neither one of us. They need to contact the Iguana Man. They need to contact Harold. They can email me, yep. you know, uh, and we can we can make this happen, guys. We can make this happen for all you hunters out there that you know that want to. You need to contact one of us. You can look on one of our sites and find us. You know, uh, I'll definitely, you know, I'll definitely. He, he'll say who who. Yeah, who yeah, yeah. I'm gonna is. yeah, I'm gonna link everybody's uh, info, like emails and and all that, you know, Instagrams and all that, uh, social media contacts and descriptions. Mm -hmm. Like I said, if you guys think you guys can, you know, help us out with this movement or if you guys have any ideas or if you guys want to come out here and talk, uh, definitely reach out to us and, uh, you know, um, and we can do this, guys, because it's just a matter of time. And I've been saying this for so long. I, you know, I've, I've been saying this five, five years ago about, hey, you know, when I first seen a couple of them and then to where the population is now. And like what I'm projecting now is the population is so big that it's just going to be doubling millions and millions every, every single year until some kind of action is done, you know, um, and it's gonna, it's gonna, it's in the long run, it's gonna be, it's gonna cause a lot of, a lot of problems for, you know, the everyday people living out here with the roads, uh, with their homes, uh, with holes in their backyards, with plants. Um, you know, these butterflies go away, these beads go away, these flowers go away. It's gonna, I mean, it, it could have a, a, a downward spiral effect on the ecosystem. Everything starts, you know, once those bees and butterflies are gone, you know, other, other plants are gonna be disappearing because of the lack of pollination. And then once those disappear, other animals that eat those plants or whatever, or other plants that depend on that are going to be are going to be gone too. That's right. I've seen I've seen a concrete bridge on one of my job sites. Oh my god! I've seen a concrete bridge that there's a hole on one side of the, the bridge like yeah. this. I wish I could post the picture, but the bridge is like this now, and they can't they can't figure out how they can get funding to fix it. Yeah. And I actually, as as big as I am, well, I lost a lot of weight since I, I I started this gig. But as big as I am, I crawled into the hole, and it was at night, and I got in there with a the light, and all you smelled was guano, and all of the beady eyes. There were hundreds, if not maybe five or six hundred of them inside of that thing, and they're digging through the pavement. They dig through that pavement, and there's holes in the pavement. There's, like, there's, there's like five bridges right around here that I can that I can name, um, that have a huge iguana infestation, and there's and there's there's huge crevices right underneath the bridges, right underneath the bridges. No telling how intricate that is, but from what I've, because I've been on Johan's job where I've seen that, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm that's a, it's a very very scary site. That bridge is no longer, you know, cars yeah, can't go over that. Yeah, it's no. not an operational. It's basically just a. Uh, like a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah, somebody's to be gonna with get you. somebody's gonna get hurt, you know. And then there's kids that walk over it. You understand? And somebody's gonna get hurt. But this is this is what they do. These things, they got they got nails on them that actually go through. And you know, everybody's saying that these things are all vegetational. But guess what? I have seen them. I have witnessed these things eating people's ham sandwiches. Chicken wings. Chicken wings. I've seen it. I have seen it. I, seen it. I, I work on a golf course where the guys, oh, how cute. Oh, they're eating their sandwiches and and they're throwing their, their Subway sandwiches. You know, uh, yep. I'm not endorsed from Subway by saying that, but they're throwing their Subway sandwiches out to the, and they got ham on it, chicken, whatever the hell, and they're eating it. So, you know what? They're adapting to anything. Exactly. Because you know, they got to eat. Well, remember they're they're used to being out in the jungles. Now they're being they're becoming urbanized. Right. They're That's in the it. city, so um, That's it. we're adapting to our environment. We're opportunists. Either there's something right. I'm hungry, and there's something right next to me. A burger, or I'm gonna walk, climb a tree 20 feet near to eat something. But you, know? you got to remember though, that changes off their whole enzymes. Everything. Man, when when they start to to eat meat, 
that changes their saliva because I've noticed getting bit by some that have caused like different types of wounds you know like like if I get bit by one over here this one is different from this end of the group and this one here look at the scar it's left you know what I'm saying and that's just because of their saliva so that tells me that they're eating Ooh, something different bacteria they're bacteria. eating yeah they have I mean bacteria in their right and then, you know I, I know that from raising different kinds of species of fish well, so they're picked up on that's very good yeah. I love see this is what again bringing a whole bunch of people that know and everyone's knowledge yeah very strong look and at smarter. that let's let's show look at that can you get a beat on that he's eating right out of the garbage can folks looking like a giant raccoon Yep, like a giant <laughs> raccoon. Exactly can you see that? Like. Can you see we'll that? We'll put that on the screen. I'll put that on the screen on my video. You can show it to them, Johan. But yeah, that yeah. right there is uh, a giant 15-pound iguana just, you know, having his way in a garbage can. Huh. And who knows what kind of food he's eating and, and what kind of, uh, right. you know, what he's doing right there. Ain't Especially no, no now with COVID. Out. You don't, you don't uh, know. Uh, yeah. You don't know if they're eating something that's infected that might change their whole DNA structure. And they might be carrying something else. You we don't, don't even know. know if they have COVID. No one's testing them. Nobody. For COVID. Well, nobody knows. Exactly. Nobody knows what this because it changes by the day. Yeah. You know, nobody knows. I you see, that. and my buddy Chuck, uh, that lives in um, Key West, he said, "All right, if you were to change the word from iguanas into rats, everybody's perspective would be different on it." You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, dang, point. I got 20 rats in my backyard, or dang. You know, uh, there's a rat in my toilet. These rats keep coming in my toilet. Or, or dang, you know, the rats are burrowing by the canals or the bridges. There's, there's, uh, there's 100 rats over there. If you were just to change the name from iguanas to rats, everybody would be completely, you know, trying to figure out something to do. You know, they would see that it's, hey, this is a problem, you know. And, you know, here's the thing with these iguanas. I'm not saying they are rats, but they are doing the same thing as rats. You know what I'm saying? They're hurting they're, together. They're, they're eating every, all the junk, eating all the native stuff, and they're pooping everywhere just like rats, and they're spreading diseases in their feces just like and rats and they're reproducing like rats yeah, no, more faster than rats. <laughs> they like are double purple <laughs> i noticed something the other day harold that you know um we were we were flushing we were flushing some out okay i was coming from one end um i had ollie on the other end and we were flushing them out so i was coming from this end and it's a big herd over here and over on the north end there was another herd. Well, they were running this way, this way, but there was one into that section over there. And it was amazing to see that these over here, like a family, came out and attacked and killed that. Really? Attacked and killed it. Holy. Can you repeat that one more time? I'm sorry. I said, I said, we were, we were coming, we would, as I said, we were coming from, we were flushing out mm -hmm. um, some, some iguanas from this side here. Yeah. Okay. Matter of fact, um, Iguana Man was at, at that job location one time, and we even flushed out some. Yep. Um, but he, uh, we flushed them out from this side here, which mm -hmm. would be the, the south end. Some of them ran into the, to the, to the, to the lake, and then one had escaped into that section there on the north end. About five or six monsters came out and grabbed it and, and tore it wow. up. Wow. And tore it up. Like, this is our property here. You stay out of here. You're, oh. yeah, they're very close niche. Yeah. I've noticed um, a little good little trick. If you ever catch a couple of live or, or in a cage. Yeah. Put them all together, walk away, come back in 30 minutes. And there's a lot more there. They're all trying to figure out how to get them out. Yeah. That's how I catch more. Yeah. It's like fishing a dolphin. You catch one dolphin, you leave it there so the rest come. Exactly. Just like the iguanas, it works the exact it's, same yeah, way. Yeah, I couldn't believe that <laughs> myself. I, saw, I, I, had saw, I, I had seen that myself where we, we didn't get to a trap in time, and we came back, and there was like 15 or 20 around the trap, pushing the trap, huh? pushing the trap. And I said, wow. I said, this is, I said they're not as stupid no, as we think they smart. are. They're, they're not. They're very, they're very smart. Yeah. Family Cer too, certain they situations, are. they are very smart and yeah. serious. So. They're like a herd. You said it right. Once you're uh, like a pack, more like it. Right. I've seen it. They're always they're going to be together at all times, always worry about each other. But I've never seen two different packs combined together. But I'm, that's, I'm gonna look for that. Well, that's time. what I said. I seen I seen the one. I gotta look one, for that. One group that was here. There was like 50 in this herd, and I came this way and I told Ollie to stay on that side so he can keep them from running over there so we can catch a couple. 
because I like to do the snare thing. I, I like love that. Too. I love that snare. It's my thing. foundation. That's where it <laughs> yeah, all. It's my love, bread and butter. That's where it started. That's hey, my bread the, and butter. The ninja. <laughs> the ninja had showed showed me everything. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he had showed me every, almost everything. I know he's got a few tricks up his sleeve, but, <laughs> <laughs> but he had showed shown me everything when it comes to like stalking them and sneaking up on sometimes i even say in my 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 video this which the ninja is here you know because <laughs> he, he spots them because i i walk past like a tree and i'd see one and then all of a sudden i catch the one and like 20 jump uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so, good. but That's yeah so good. uh you know i tell you um i'm i'm really happy to meet you harold oh, you it's know, my pleasure i'm, I mean, re I'm really know i just know uh, Iguana Movement, let's help Florida. I said, I'll be there. So yeah, man, let's, let, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's... I'll get something started writing up right when I get back. I get my office right on it. Right. I, I think we should do two. One, um, like a written petition. And then, since the big followers and everything, something for online petition. Right. Because you'll get way more signatures if we can put a thing online. Exactly. Because yeah. we get it a lot more states. Even put people a, that are not even around in our states that want us to help Florida. Put a, put a link out, they click it, and they go right there and they, they just sign the petition real quick. Right. Sign it, boom. Yeah, right. I think I can work wow. on that. I yeah, think that'd if, be great. If y'all can put that together, we can definitely, uh, you know, put that on the channel or put it on the post or whatever like that. Well, definitely. Definitely get well, some signatures. Do the highlight again, you know, emphasize on what we want to talk about with the, the knowledge, the plan, access, uh, some types of incentives, you know, program. Yeah, there's got to there's got to be something at some point. And, and you know what? I don't want to sit around here and wait until like you know there's a, a something that really bad happens. Right. And they find out it's because of that, and then now, it, now everybody's in a state of emergency. I just don't want it to go that yeah, far. It's like gonna that, be you trouble know? the word too. Exactly yeah. at that point, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Like we can stop it. Now. We need it. We need to do it right now. We can't wait any longer. Like next year or two, no. there's no telling what's going to be happening out here with these iguanas. What kind of damage is going to be done, and what the population is going to be like. There's no. And there's what new absolutely no telling. Absolutely what, what no telling. What are they going to morph into? Exactly. And whatever they're crossbreeding with other lizards is coming up next. What new other species are going to come? Well, they're eating vegetation right now. I think if the population continues to grow, uh, they might actually be con competing for food, and they, who, who knows what they're going to do. But maybe, maybe the ones that you're seeing eating all the natural food, you know, like it's embedded into their brain now. They're younglings. Yeah, we ate food. And now before you know it, maybe they don't want plants and they eat everything. You never know. Yeah, you who never knows know. if they start breeding with, interbreeding with spinies yeah. that do eat meat. You never know. You might get a hybrid. Crazy. I guarantee yeah. hybrids are coming soon. There's too many of them. Yeah. The, I see. Listen, I seen one the other day that had a, a solid blue head, a, a gray body, and white feet. Oh, we oh. saw. We, we saw. saw a white we saw an all black one today with a white tail. With a white tail. Yeah. Oh man. So like, you know how the stripes are black and it's yeah. like orange? Yeah. Right. The opposite. Yeah. Right. That's right. So it was, it was really we crazy. We we got a good shot on him, but he's swam across. But we didn't yeah. Care. And you know, it's like I said, the state, the state can actually benefit this if they if they do this because it'll create jobs because yep. somebody would would probably even think about processing the meat because the meat. Uh -huh. Is, is very good. Empanada. It's, uh, they already have uh, certain, <laughs> certain places and certain territories of U.S. that are allowed to sell it. Well, yeah, yeah. In, uh, in New York, they sell it. I, I New know. New York, that. California. Yeah. Puerto Rico. Texas. Texas sells it. Texas, you know? really? Yeah. I, believe it or not, I get people that call me from every. Hey, man, can, yeah. can you send me some of that? I said, well, you know, I'm Most not a processor. In Texas too. I'm, not, I'm not a processor, you know, but you know, you know why in Texas? Because there's, there's a lot of cultural people there oh, from Mexico. Yeah. Great hunters too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, so guys, as I was saying, listen, we're putting this together. Yep. You know, we're going to have this movement. If you guys want to jump on this bandwagon, we need to do this ASAP. You know, and for all you, all you, you political people out there that know me, call me. We need to talk. We definitely need better, to talk. Better sooner than later. Better yeah. sooner than later. The like yesterday. The yeah, sooner the better. We got manpower. I know we definitely got people from all up in the Keys all the way to Pinellas County. Between just me and then what you guys have. We have the whole state covered. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. they're going to, if they're starting to get sightings in Pinellas County. In like Ocala, that, too. That's what? Letting, that's Ocala. letting you know that they're adapting to the cold. Because yeah, if it was cold was knocking them out, they wouldn't be going up that way. Exactly. The high you go up in Florida, attack. the colder it gets. Yeah. 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 I have a friend I have a friend right there in Silver Springs. He goes out Ooh. to the Ocala National Forest. Wow. He has, he's seen them there. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, you know, wow. He's seen them there. So, you know, and that's that's a 
that's a, a pretty, it's like an area that's similar to the glades. Yep. You, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's Bush. yeah. <laughs> and and that's it because it, 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 it goes from Ocala right into the, the, the forest goes right into Daytona. Mm -hmm. So they, they're probably going up towards Daytona and crossing over and coming into the so, so wow. the Ocala National Forest, you know? So the way makes sense. The panhandle all the way. Yeah. So. Any notes? Any any last thoughts on that? On anything? That no, you can I think I, th I think I think I covered all my points that I wanted to speak to. Pretty good. Okay, um, cool. Just keep in mind, guys, wherever you see any kind of brown anoles living, like even in Disney World, I see brown anoles there. Anywhere that you see brown anoles, these iguanas can live. And since they're reproducing so crazy, their 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 populations and their, and their territories are spreading exponentially. It's it's insane. How we're having an infestation here? It might be you know in in Disney World one day or in Orlando one day. Right. It it might be, and we and that's something that would you know it's it's something that if we can stop it, why not try to stop it right now until right. it becomes completely out of hand, and it's just absolutely insane. You know. So that's that's my last couple well, of thoughts. Well, like I said, they gave they give millions towards towards the the Python relief uh, thing, but. Like I said, they gave millions for that, and it's listed as an invasive funding. The reason why I think, I'm thinking, is that we don't see any of that is because nobody's screaming. screaming. We need to scream. Yeah. You right. feeling me? Yeah. That's yeah, it. I love it. That was good. Okay. <laughs> we need to scream. Tell him, Ollie, right? Right. You know what he did. You know what he did. Oh, I like him. Oh, he's great back up there. I <laughs> yeah, love it. <laughs> that was man. great. He's my man. Well, I think we touched on everything once again. I don't know what more programs, knowledge. Yep. Um, time to do something now. Protection from we the We don't know FWC. who to reach out to. Whoever, reach out to us. You know, we're willing to meet the state, the city, the county, the whole state of Florida to get this taken care of already before it becomes a bigger problem. Yeah. So all the problems we had this year, we'll just recap real quick. Um, people with the foundation, yeah. people, um, the officers, daughter that was coming from the keys and swerved out the way it caused a, a huge pileup in the key west uh yeah. the old man that retired on a bike and the iguana ran in front of him cracked his head open yeah. um all these people that are having iguanas in their toilets thank god that no one has gotten hurt yet because once someone gets bit you're gonna see what happens i'm gonna call it now when someone gets bit they're gonna need stitches when they get the stitches they're gonna miss one of the teeth it's gonna get infected they're gonna need surgery in their private parts I promise you, yep. that's what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. Um, that's about to be crazy. Oh See this here? This this here is from a bite that never heals. Huh? Oh, that was terrible. This never heals. Love this guy. Never heals. Okay? Hold on, don't Has not healed. Don't Hold on, Johan. Let me get it. <laughs> okay, hang on. Let me get, let, let the ninja get it. Okay. There so, you go. The, the burrowing owls are protected and... You know, what are they protected from? Just humans or from or from invasive animals? We're seeing iguanas right, bullying. Yeah. We're seeing iguanas go right in their nest. There's no protection. There's nobody enforcing that. They're just putting a, a sign up. So, you know, there's definitely, you know, it's about to be 2022. Yeah. And there definitely needs to be some new changes, but, especially what's what's going on. We're here every day and we see exactly what's going on. So uh, all y'all at home, drop some comments. Let us know what you guys think. Um, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and. Give us some, you know, if you guys have any advice or any feedback or anything, any input, let us know. Because every bit of everybody's opinion is going to help us out and get where we need to be so we can do it. Put it together, y'all, because I'm going to be sitting on Tallahassee's doorstep with this, with this. I don't care if I got to knock on your door and sit there and camp out. I ain't got nothing to do. I will be there. I love it. <laughs> I love it. No, I think uh, we touched points already on everything. Anyone that wants to get involved, comment, contact us. Maybe something we haven't thought of or maybe something we didn't know where to look yet. Just point us in the right direction. At the end of the day, we are going to save Florida from these iguanas. I believe that to this point, there is no getting rid of them. It's all about containing them. But maybe we contain them for a couple of years. Maybe we can bring down their numbers so we can finally actually get rid of them. Because there's no point of investing all this money to get rid from the urban areas if they're just going to repopulate in the parks and other places that we don't have access to. So we need the full access to everything because if we're going to do something, we have to do it right. I don't want this to be a recurring issue or all the manpower, time, and money that we spent to get rid of them for them just to come back. That's an endless fight. It's like clueless, pointless to me. But if anyone knows, let us know. I'm Harold Iguana Lifestyles. I'm Johan Sunset. Iguana people. And Iguana man, y'all. So that's it, man. Iguana Ninja. That's it. Say goodbye, Ollie. Bye. Y'all oh, hit us up. And thanks for all you, all you guys, 
all you guys for subscribing mainly all you guys from germany out there and and the united kingdom who 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 have been hitting me up and all of that i appreciate all of y'all germany yeah hey germany will come in <laughs> there you go later say goodbye Alex. Right, guys. bye bye